Senator from Connecticut. Madam President, I'd ask consent that the call to the quorum be rescinded. Without objection. Madam President, I come to the floor today to remember the terrible tragedy that occurred one year ago tomorrow in Minneapolis, Minnesota, when the bridge carrying Interstate 35W over the Mississippi River near downtown Minneapolis abruptly collapsed during the evening rush hour. At least 50 vehicles plunged some 60 feet into the Mississippi River, killing 13 people and injuring dozens more. And as we approach the anniversary of this devastating event, my thoughts and prayers, I know all of them, of all of our colleagues are, with the victims and their families, with Senator Klobuchar, our colleagues, Senator Coleman, Representative Ellison, whose district the bridge is in, and those, uh, all those affected, of course, by this terrible tragedy. The people of my own state of Connecticut can sympathize in a direct way with the people of Minnesota as they prepare to remember 25 years ago, a bridge carrying Interstate 95, the main thoroughfare along the east coast of the United States, uh, over the Mianus River in Greenwich, Connecticut, abruptly collapsed in the early afternoon. Four vehicles plunged into the Mianus River. Three people lost their lives. Others were sustained serious injuries. It reminds, uh, remains one of the worst transportation disasters in my small state's history. Madam President, the tragedy in Minnesota is the most recent example of our national infrastructure crumbling before our very eyes. Indeed, this is not a problem that only affects Minneapolis or Connecticut, or in the case of last year's steam pipe eruption in New York City. These are problems affecting every single state, every single county, every single community, city, and, and, uh, and our nation, from San Diego, California, to Bangor, Maine. For far too long, we've taken our infrastructure systems our roads, bridges, mass transit systems, drinking water systems, wastewater systems, public housing properties, are all for granted. And for far too long, we have failed to invest adequately in their long-term sustainability. And today, we find ourselves in a precarious position concerning the future viability, a precarious position that is costing the lives, jeopardizing the high quality of life that we've come to enjoy and expect as American citizens. The Federal Highway Administration estimates, Madam President, that 152,000, that's 152,000 of the nation's bridges are either structurally deficient or functionally obsolete. Put another way, one out of every four bridges in our nation is in a state of serious disrepair. The American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials estimates that it would cost some $140 billion just to repair the 152,000 bridges that are in that condition. The life-threatening problems are not confined, of course, merely to bridges. The National Highway Safety, Traffic Safety Administration, reports that approximately 14,000 Americans die each year, at least in part, because our roads and bridges are no longer up to the task. Congestion on our highways, of course, where tons of carbon dioxide and other pollutants are pumped into the atmosphere every day. These emissions compromise the health of children and adults, contribute to global warming, and pose immense risk to the future of all of us. Again, the congestion on our highways because of the absence of mass transit systems or adequate means to move people. Tens of millions of Americans receive drinking water in their homes every day from pipes on the average of over 100 years old. Here in our nation's capital city, in the area of Georgetown, one of the city's most affluent neighborhoods, wastewater is still conveyed through wooden sewage pipes constructed in the 19th century. In the city of Mil Milwaukee, over 400,000 people were sickened several years ago with flu-like symptoms caused by a strain of bacteria in the municipal drinking water system of that community. The bacteria strain was eventually linked to inadequate treatment of drinking water. It's not just our health and safety, Madam President, that is affected by our crumbling infrastructure. In fact, our national pros uh, prosperity is at stake. From the days of the Roman aqueducts to the present, a nation's ability to grow and prosper has always been relied upon, has always relied upon its ability to effectively move people, goods, and information. Ask any American today how we're doing in achieving this objective, and chances are the response would be the same. We're not doing very well, and we could be doing substantially better. When the average American spends 51 and a half hours a year, more than two full days of their lives stuck in traffic congestion, that I think we all can do better. When one out of three of our roads are in poor or mediocre condition, then I think all of us would agree we can do better. And when the United States invests less than 
of its gross domestic product on infrastructure, while nations like China and India, the major competitors of this country in the 21st century, invest between 7 and 12 percent, then I think all of us recognize we better do better or we're going to find our country in a very weakened position very, very quickly. Infrastructure, Madam President, is not something you can correct overnight. The investments need to be made. It takes time to do it right. And we're already now close to the moving to the second decade of this century, way behind in this area. Madam President, tomorrow is also the one-year anniversary of the introduction of the National Infrastructure Bank Act that I've offered uh, with Senator Chuck Hagel of Nebraska, a bipartisan bill that we've gained a number of co-sponsors on over the last year. We'd like more. The Infrastructure Bank would establish a unique and powerful public-private partnership to restore our nation's infrastructure. Using limited federal resources, it would leverage the significant resources, both at home and abroad, global resources, of the private sector. Madam President, if we don't talk about how we're going to finance this, it's not going to happen. Uh, Madam President, I'd ask for Nez consent to proceed for two additional minutes. Is there objection? Without objection. Madam President, we need to come up with a financing mechanism. We all understand the need for doing this. And I think all of us recognize as well, we're not going to talk about us doing this out of the appropriation process. There just isn't enough resources there to meet the one trillion six hundred billion dollar needs to just currently repair decaying infrastructure. We need a better mechanism to finance this. And what Senator Hagel of Nebraska and I have designed, having worked with the Center for Strategic and International Studies over the last two and a half years, along with Senator Bob Kerry, former Senator of Nebraska, and Warren Rudman, the former Senator of New Hampshire, in conjunction with Felix Rulliton, a well-known business uh, individual in New York who was almost solely responsible for getting New York City back on its feet years ago, and John Hamry, the former official at the Defense Department, have constructed is a means by which a limited amount of federal dollars could attract massive amounts of private capital to come and allow us really to begin this work. Absent some idea like this, and we think this is a good one, absent some idea like this, then year after year we can give speeches about our infrastructure, but nothing much will happen. This bill is only designed to deal with national uh, needs, regional needs, not local ones. We leave those up to the local municipalities. But we need to once again recognize that to grow as a people, to have our economy grow and provide the jobs and uh, fulfill the aspirations and hopes of many Americans, that we have to grow as well in our capacity to handle that kind of growth. And the infrastructure needs of our, non uh, our, non our nation are daunting. And so, Madam President, on this the tragic anniversary of the events in Minneapolis uh, and the reminder of what occurred in my own state as well as the recognition of what's occurring every single day all across our nation. My hope would be uh, that in the coming Congress, uh, whether we're talking about a McCain administration or an Obama administration, that infrastructure would be a high priority for our country. That we'd get on that track together here as Democrats and Republicans and come up with some creative ideas on how we can invest in this needed aspect of our economy. And with that, Madam President, I yield the floor.